We grew a new YouTube channel from zero to 6,000 subscribers in four months. Surprise, I started a new YouTube channel. What else is new? <laughs> this one really feels like it's going to stay though. It's about running. I don't know if I've really talked about running all that much on this channel. I made a video a while back about a half marathon I ran during COVID. And I think that's pretty much it. If you follow our podcast, anything else like that, you would know. I run a lot. I've now run eight marathons and I don't plan on stopping anytime soon. So it kind of made sense to start a running channel. So I have two goals for making this video on my main channel, explaining how we started this whole running channel thing. Goal number one, I want to show you how my brain works with making art on this platform. Number two, I'm hoping that it just inspires you to maybe start your own channel or some other creative endeavor. It is not my plan to convince you to start a YouTube channel or some other creative endeavor or business based off of creativity necessarily. I wanna give my best advice and I guess experienced advice to other filmmakers and creative minds on what they might be able to do instead of making some sort of YouTube channel that's surrounding said creativity. Because we all know it's pretty saturated out there. Now this is different than every other how to grow and how to start on YouTube in 2020 whatever kind of video and rather something that might help you be more introspective and maybe think about things before you dive in headfirst. So let me set up this advice with a little bit of context. For the past four months, Shua and I have been filming and editing for my already existing channel, Floberg Runs. Okay, so it wasn't zero to 6,000 subscribers, more like 250 subscribers to 6,000 subscribers. Basically the same thing. And the 250 to 6,000 happened from September of 2022 all the way through the end of January of 2023. It was a little bit more than four months. Most of the subscribers came in in the last month, all of January, because we made a video about how I ran 10 miles a day for 30 days straight back in May of 2020. During COVID in 2020, I started the Flowberg Runs channel because I just didn't have as much time, you know, working on stuff and wanted to make something that was birthed out of passion, something I was excited about in my attempts to do my fourth marathon. As soon as everything started picking back up with work, I had to put it on the back burner and I just didn't make videos after those few months. And then in 2021, I made no content on that channel, but ran the New York City Marathon in 2021, ran into Joe Greer, and that's when the whole idea about the documentary was born going into 2022. And if you don't know, shot a whole feature length documentary last year in 2022 with Joe Greer and his marathon attempt at CIM. It's pretty cool. It's going to come out this summer, hopefully. And while 2022 was crazy busy with the documentary, I was taking my marathon training the most seriously I ever have. And it was my best year of marathon running in my whole career of doing it. So without going into great detail about that, you could just go to Flowberg Runs and watch a lot of those videos. I just want to set that up so that you could hear some of these stories of what made me want to get back into making videos on that channel. And it's not that I got less busy in that time, like it's kind of been the most busy I've ever been, but I did hire Shua as my full-time employee last summer, summer of 2022. And that's what made this approach sustainable. Flowberg Runs in 2020 was a passion project. I started doing it because I was so excited about making that stuff. I had been watching a ton of running YouTube and it was one of my favorite niches on the platform. And honestly, my favorite stuff to watch. So I was like, well, I wanna make stuff about this. Fast forward of June 2022, I ran Grandma's Marathon up in Duluth, Minnesota, alongside Kofuzi and Ben Johnson, two personalities in the running space. And Kofuzi put me in his vlog that day. And being the freak nostalgic person that I am, I've rewatched his Chicago Marathon vlogs over and over and over. And honestly, he's one of my favorite YouTubers. So it was an honor and a privilege to run alongside him. But it kind of made me bummed that I didn't have my own video for that day. I'm super thankful that he made it and then I get to rewatch it. But I kind of vowed to myself, okay, in the fall, I definitely want to be making videos about my Chicago Marathon and New York City Marathon attempts. That June, I unfortunately did not break the three hour barrier, which is what I've been after for five years. I came in at 3.03.53 and was bummed about that, but it was still my fastest time I had ever ran. And I knew that Chicago was potentially going to be the time I finally did it in October. So yeah, I vowed to make a video about my Chicago Marathon attempt in October. So we made one video of the last parts of my prep in September on the track. And then one of my last workouts running the second half of the course, cause that's what I like to do, I'm a weirdo. I ran the second half of the course for a workout in the last weeks. I thought to myself, well, I know I like watching course preview videos. So why don't I film this entire thing? and put it out the week before the race and I did and it got thousands of views and I was like there might be something here especially if I go under three hours which is something that a lot of people are trying to do maybe that marathon vlog will get a lot of views as well and get some traction and get people behind kind of my sentiment philosophy behind running and just having fun with it so I broke three it was 
one of the coolest moments in my life. That video is one of the most nostalgic things already for me. And I still watch it fairly regularly, like a narcissist, but I love it. And it seemed to resonate with a lot of other people too. I was able to meld a lot of the skills that I have in storytelling, a crescendo of emotion towards the end with a hook at the beginning. And it really felt like it connected with a lot of people and a lot of people started subscribing. So we did the same thing for New York. I made another video of that race, which did not go as well. <laughs> 178 BPM. There goes 305. Try to hold on for as long as I can. Which is a nice little contrast uh, to show that I'm a human and that I can't break three hours every single marathon I run. But going back to that one that we made in May of 2020, the 10 miles a day, Shu and I sat down after these two races in the fall and went, you know, like, what else could we make moving forward? Because I'm not going to be racing another marathon for a while. So what would it be like if you just sat down for a whole week and edited that video. That's when we really dug in and created something that felt super, super special. I've seen a lot of videos like this on YouTube of like I ran for 30 days, but we really put our own spin on it, really trying to lead into the motivational aspect of it using music and storytelling. And it was very, very well received being one of the largest viewed videos on the channel now. So we're now currently in a series of weekly uploads, which I've never done before, but can do because she was so consistent with the editing on my marathon buildup leading up to my race in April this year. We've done five straight weeks of weekly uploads, which is super exciting, and we don't plan on slowing down anytime soon. Why am I sharing all of this background and all of this nuance in this story? It's because I want filmmakers and creatives who are pursuing stuff like this to think outside the box a little bit. Maybe hear some perspective on what I'm super passionate about. Maybe even consider starting something that isn't just a meta creative type of channel that shares all the tips and tricks about what you already know as an artist, but maybe taking that artistry and applying it to something you are passionate about or applying it to some other genre that doesn't have content like that in the space that is super creative, that is super beautiful, that sounds super great. And I think that's what's happening here. We are taking our filmmaking and storytelling skills and bringing it to the filmmaking world. And it's really, really resonating with people. What do you like watching on YouTube that's outside of the creative niche that you work in? Maybe you want to talk about that thing on another channel. Or maybe you want to make stories about that thing on another channel. Please don't believe that this is some sort of overnight success. This is five, six years of me training for marathons and learning how to do it on top of 10 years of learning how to become a filmmaker and a full-time one at that. And five more years of studying other running channels, seeing what works and what doesn't and what uh, interests people in the space. So this thing was birthed out of passion, something that I just wanted to do, but now I'm seeing so many opportunities for what it could mean in future years with this hobby that I love so much. And a lot of people have warned me, like, don't go and make another channel about your hobby, about the thing that you love. But the way that it's sustainable for me is that she was helping along with it. Like he's actually being the workhorse behind this production and it wouldn't be possible without him. And so taking more of a director's role has been really cool and being able to relinquish that control and let him take the reins on the story, but just kind of guiding it as it goes. Been super proud of him and what he's been able to do and make in this endeavor. Shout out my man. <laughs> you should spin it around. Shua, say hi. <laughs> They can't hear you. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm Shua. Mike's over there. <laughs> now, the brand isn't profitable yet, but it is monetized. And it's kind of crazy. We made like 600 bucks, maybe even 700 bucks in the first month, um, which is kind of mind blowing. But there's all sorts of business plans I have in the future. I don't need to start those now. I'm just more concerned about building this thing so that people can be a part of it, that there's a community that's created and that it's actually helping people first and foremost, or it becomes profitable with helping people. The truth of it is that I'm just so excited that this platform, this channel is motivating people to get out the door and do the thing that I'm so passionate about as well, that I can connect with people and nerd out about all the things running with them. So yeah, it's just a, a brave new frontier that's super exciting. Wanted to share it here and yeah, share some of the philosophy and the insights of what it looks like for me to start a new creative thing like this. So to review, if you're looking to start a YouTube channel this year, consider doing something outside of the commentary on creativity. Start with something else you're deeply passionate about. Maybe use your existing skills to be a different voice in that niche space and develop a philosophy that can help you find a sustainable approach to continuing that new endeavor. Show up consistently and just see what happens. Thanks for watching. Bye.